Annie Murphy plays Joan in Black Mirror. Joan is awful. I'm Matt Noble of Gold Derby. I want to start off, Annie, by asking you, it's called Joan is Awful, but how would you describe Joan? Joan is just a human, man. Joan's just trying her best. Um, I think, you know, what I like so much about about Joan, uh, I mean, I liked a lot of things about Joan, but I, I loved that she's just like, a deeply flawed, you know, complicated woman who's living in kind of the gray area of life. And I think, I think that's just what it is to be, to be a human being. When you like read this script for the first time, what excited you the most about this character? Um, well, <laughs> the flaws, but also incredibly selfishly as I was flipping through the script, I saw my own friggin' name looking back at me. And that was, the, that was the first time that's ever happened. So I was kind of bowled over by that. And then I also saw Selma Hayek's name looking back at me too. So that was like a real dish, dish, uh, double whammy. So yeah, that was, that was, a, it was a first time, first time for me. Yeah. And like the, the role was written for you, I believe. So what, was that like for like an established show like Black Mirror that's had success to like be sort of seeking you for a character? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, it felt like it did feel like my own little episode of Black Mirror um, mm -hmm. that I was living. Uh, I mean, I've been such a huge fan of the show for so long and such a huge fan of Charlie's. <laughs> and just to know that I was even remotely on his radar was was incredible um and then to you know go to london and be a part of that world for six or seven weeks or whatever it was 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 just fascinating it's such a well-oiled machine and the crew was amazing and the cast was amazing and so it was a real uh it was a real nice like kind of reinvigoration of the spark of of doing what i do what do you think special about black mirror as a show you said you've enjoyed it for a while um, well, Charlie's brain, first and foremost, is just this like incredible treasure trove of weirdness and fears and imagination. And um, I think what's so cool about the show is that it doesn't exist in this like sci-fi realm that's so weird and wild that it it's full fantasy. I think what's so impactful about the show is that you're like, oh shit, this could actually happen. And not just like someday, like maybe in our lifetime, technology is moving so fast that maybe some of these things are actually possible. And I think that's what adds this other level of like spookiness and, and uh, weird anticipation to the show. Yeah, and especially this episode, for you yeah. as an actor who is like really um, uh, talking about what your life, like what your industry could look like in a number of years. So was that like, um, did that hit, hit too close to home for you? Or is that something good to tap into? Well, I mean, when we got the script, I guess what I'm trying to figure out the timeline here, I think I got the script in like August or something like that. And, and it was like, Oh shit, this is like, this is really, you know, this, this is so timely. And then when we shot in October, we were like, oh no, this is really timely. And then when the show came out in June, I guess it was, it was all happening. Like, like, and then the strike happened mm -hmm. and that was such a, you know, a dominant issue in, in, um, the strike was AI and deep fakes and, and all of that. And so it just felt like, I think maybe, you know, in all the Black Mirror episodes, this is the one that Charlie had his finger like just so incredibly, incredibly on the button with. Um, so, yeah, it was just it, the the timing was just so, so bizarre with this one. Yeah. Uh, what was the biggest challenge for you playing Joan? Working with Salma Hayek and not in the way that you think, like. I was, <laughs> I went in being like, okay, it's Salma Hayek. Like, what's she going to be like? And she, 
the challenge was just like not getting a bucket of popcorn and just like sitting back and watching her work because she is so smart and so funny and so ready to like go in and be goofy and make fun of herself. And I just had such a blast. So it was kind of like keeping a, keeping a straight face around her and her, you know, antics and keeping my eyeballs in my head with some of the, the wardrobe that she was put in. And by the way, she's just, what a specimen. Yeah. I, I, there's some big, like crazy moments in the episode um, that we can get into. (laughs) But for me, like one of the funniest little bits, and it's a small little bit, is when you're sitting with Selma Hayek for the first time in the in the show. She talks about they told me it would be a prestige show, and like you know, I did, and look, I knew it wasn't going to be Frida, but I couldn't imagine it would be something like this. And you do just this lovely little double take of like, wait, is that a slide on me? Like, what is that? <laughs> um, like? How important is an actor those little sort of moments and reactions when you're not the person speaking in a scene? Oh, I think so important. I think um, this is so lame. This uh, I'm going to regret saying this out loud, but Go but I, think I have learned, and I'm sure you've heard over the years too, is like acting is reacting. And so it's, your acting is the the whole thing and listening is such an important part of it because we spend so much of our time doing that. And, um, and yeah, it's important not to be like, well, it's not, not my part anymore and just kind of go dead and turn off. So yeah, it's, and it's fun. There's so much to be mined from those moments where you're not saying anything at all. Yeah. Well, like some of my favorite moments in Shit's Creek was when Alexis was saying these are like, wild things from her past and just Eugene Levy's reaction. <laughs> like, as Those he's eyebrows. Yeah, it all. <laughs> processing. And you told him so well, he reacted so well, and you could really see that how important that listening and that sort of dynamic was. Yeah, uh, there's also a big, uh, not a small moment, but a bigger moment in the church uh, in this episode, Joan is Awful. What was going through your head as you were acting that scene? Um, (laughs) well, I'll tell you first when I was reading that scene, like I was just so excited when I got that script and I was like flipping through it. I was so stoked. And then I got to this scene in the church and I was like, yes, like this is exactly my wheelhouse. And I can't remember who I said that to, but they're like, he realized you just said like, oh, my wheelhouse is taking a shit in a church. And I was like, yeah, yeah, maybe I need to like, I need to branch out a little bit more. But I was, I just thought it was so ridiculous and over the top. And when have you seen that before? And, um, and on the day we had so much fun because we had three actresses doing that exact scene. We had Kayla Lorette and myself and Selma. And um, it was just such a silly, ridiculous day. And a bunch of the crew we're playing the the people in the congregation and watching everyone's different kind of like interpretation of how to do it. It was, it was so much fun. And we had a, like, we all had a penis drawn on our forehead. It was just like true, true hilarity. I had, it was a, a really memorable day. Uh, like, we don't need to go into too many details on it if you don't want, but what was just your reaction to the sort of big twist at the end of the episode? Well, uh, I mean, it's it this Charlie's so good at just like you think you've had the twist and then like, no, 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 there's another one that's gonna come and really wallop you. Um, and then I mean like ha- having Michael Sarah be a part of it, and it was just so so cool and it kind of it was a real challenge for me finding out the twist that I was me that <laughs> um and so mm-hmm. trying to like bring in elements of Annie Murphy to the way I played Joan um like my I brought in some of my like this like my stupid hand talking all the time um but like bringing in some of my personal mannerisms to to the Joan character and 
but then like trying not as with every black mirror episode and i learned on this one like just you can't overthink it too much because as soon as you're like but wait what if this is this and then this this and then you just drive yourself insane so it was it was a really fun cool challenge that i've never had before yeah is that a problem with acting a lot overthinking stuff oh yeah 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 you kind of have to i i personally have to think about it and then like lobotomize lobotomize myself just like a tiny bit and be like okay we're going to throw that overthinking part of your brain away and just try to lean into like impulse and and intuition <laughs> on the day yeah is like um we're on awards website at gold derby uh we love the emmy awards and that final season of shits creek you guys won everything on the primetime emmy telecast you're the only comedy series that's ever done that one for acting awards writing directing and best comedy series sort of i guess what like did that mean to you to get that recognition from the academy not just for your performance but for the for this series that's got that place in comedy history oh man it was it was it's hard to find the the proper words to to describe it without sounding you know corny or cliche but um that show meant so much to me and i know that it's become a show that has come to mean so much to other people, not just in a form of entertainment, but, you know, in finding a safe space and a happy place and, you know, help with mental health and or coming out to your family or, you know, it's, it's become this like really big, wonderful thing. And um, there were so many insanely talented, kind, wonderful people working on that show for six years. And, they all became, you know, such close family to me and dear friends. And so to see those talents on and off screen being recognized was just so special. And especially like, literally, we were given our Emmys by someone in a hazmat suit. Yeah. Like we had, we all had to quarantine for a week before we got to go to, to the show. And so I think especially during that, you know, very deeply pandemic -y time it, it just meant it was all the more special yeah is there something you've sort of taken with you from that performance of alexis and that you know you keep with you now as as an actor that you learned from that process um i think i've taken thankfully just just a smidge of alexis's confidence um a little and bit. like a little bit because you, you don't want too much of that that's yeah. that's far too much confidence a little bit alexis yeah yeah it's a little bit alexis too much confidence um but yeah i i think you know that was really my first significant role and it taught me so much and it gave me you know so much experience on set and just going in and being schooled by eugene and catherine every day was such an insane education and so i walked away from shits with like you know more tools in my toolbox and and a little bit more confidence in terms of like okay yeah maybe i can do this you know <laughs> what do you think back on that time is there a like moment that just pops into your head a forefront oh god there were so many so many in incredible moments um it, I I just I I remember like the first day so vividly going in just overwhelmed with like the most I hadn't slept the night before at all I was so nervous um and just going in and being received by Eugene and Catherine with like not as like oh hi welcome to our set newbie it was like all right what are we gonna do like let's brainstorm let's start let's dig in and start you know mm -hmm playing with this and figuring it out and it immediately I was like brought into the fold right away and I that was just such an example of how to how to do it right I think and what did you find the funniest thing about like is this just a funny moment or just the something that you found funny about that show that 
Oh, I mean, just the, the the dynamics of this family and the town that were written so, so beautifully. I remember, I mean, there was a day that I was sandwiched between Eugene and Chris Elliott in like in the front of a of a pickup truck. It was in the milk episode where Alexis buys like however many gallons of, of yeah. milk. Accidentally. And um, and. I was just the audience, but I was like the the peanut butter and jelly in the sandwich of these two ridiculous men. And Chris was just razzing Eugene and it was hot and we were kind of delirious. But Eugene got to a point where he was like crying, laughing and just the like banter between the two of these incredible dudes on this insanely hot day. And Eugene kept having to like powder puff himself because of all the tears and the sweat running down his face but that was just kind of like that's what happened often on set people just had a real cackle and I think that's to be able to go to work and laugh is one of the best things ever yeah you said before like how important listening was as an actor what what do you think is like for you as an actor when you approach character or performance what's sort of really important for you and a priority um I mean I do as I I did say and I do I do overthink things but I I also think it's so important uh this might not be a good thing to say publicly but like usually usually not all the time but I learn my my lines like day of obviously I've read the script multiple times I have an idea of where I'm going but I learn the actual lines like in hair and makeup um and I think that allows a lot of flexibility um because you haven't like you know you haven't set like and then I'm gonna do this when I say this and I'm gonna you know move here when I um it just allows for a lot of kind of like uh impulse to take over um and also when I'm not uh when I'm not like working on a script I I have a staring problem I have a really big staring problem that I've learned to just lean into I love watching people I love it I love eavesdropping on people's conversations um I love putting in my headphones pretending I'm listening to music or a podcast and I'm really just listening to your conversations (laughs) and watching what you're doing um and that's such a part of it for me is just kind of like watching people do their thing um as much as I can and trying not to get busted doing it yeah I guess being aware being aware of those around you and what's happening and like that gives you more perspectives and also gives you an opportunity to um so like a lot of acting is about serving the other right it's about like how can we build something together um yeah yeah, it's cool and was there a moment when you knew you wanted to act or you just love performing um, I, there wasn't like a, a specific moment, but I know it happened early. It was in, it was definitely in high school. Um, I, there was an amazing, amazing theater program at the high school that I went to. And I had this incredible drama teacher, Miss Boychuk. And, um, I did the plays every year and I was, you know, one of the very eager theater nerds. And I just felt, I, it was probably like in my last year of high school, I was, 16 or 17 and I was just like I can't not do this anymore because initially it was like this is my hobby and I'll go get a real job when it's time to do that um and just kind of like the harsh and exciting realization that I the real job that I wanted was in fact being an actor (laughs) so and luckily my parents shockingly my parents were like yeah go for it yeah (laughs) um so I did I did (laughs) And to sort of bring this all together and finish up, Annie, like how did all these sort of lessons and things that you've picked up for all these years come together in this Joan is awful black mirror? Is there a particular, um, yeah. How did like, how did this all play out when you came to do Joan is awful? Um, that's a good, wow. That's a good question. Um, I mean, I think Joan had a lot of, um, you know, fight and perseverance in her. And this is a business industry job that you need a lot of that in. 
Um, there are a lot of real speed bumps along the way. And there are a lot of people saying no to you. And, um, but I think that, that Joan also had a lot of optimism. Uh, and that's what's so exciting. It's, it's the thing that's, that's both good and bad about this job is that like the phone doesn't ring for such a long time and you have to keep, you know, your motivation up and your passion about the job up, but then you get a call one day and it's, you know, Charlie Brooker asking you to spend seven weeks in London if you're lucky. And I was so lucky. Um, so it's, it's really, it's an exciting, it's an exciting up and down job to be a part of. And I've learned, I've, gr I've grown a thick skin along the way. Well, Annie, all the best with future things, but also maybe Black Mirror, Jones Awful can bring you back to the Emmys. That would be cool. People, oh my gosh. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, and also people watching this can go to goldderby.com to follow our awards coverage and uh, join in on the predicting and discussing and following the awards with us there. And Annie, just thanks so much for your time today. I've really appreciated it. It was really nice chatting, Matt.